Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Avatar 2. Avatar 2, now with more water. Mm -hmm. Bigger, badder, wetter, juicier Avatar. It's not doing as well at the box office as was predicted. Now, now this by no means... Uh, means that the movie is going to be a box office disaster. But remember, Disney needs $2 billion to break even on this one. Well, they were saying it would do a lot better, and they're, they're just walking it back some. They're walking it back. They're they're adjusting their projections. Of course, they've got excuses. Originally, this movie was supposed to do $150 million to $175 million. I was saying $175 no, uh, domestic. Yeah, now they're saying, now they're saying $130 million. So yeah. that's nothing to sneeze at, right? But again, this is a movie that was supposed to be the second coming, mm -hmm. supposed to be the biggest thing. Speaking of the second coming, we're also gonna talk about uh, the Avatar fans who are depressed that Pandora is not real. Mm -hmm. I remember this being a thing when the movie first came out, that people were uh, suicidal because they couldn't, yeah, I, they couldn't fly with the blue cat people. I'm like, well, you know, maybe you should go to Canada. So yeah, you can go to Canada. You can, they can help you. They can help you find your wings. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about all this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, over two hundred eighty-two, almost two hundred eighty-three. We're like we're literally like less than fifty away, I think, from that. So hit the subscribe button. So yeah, everybody talking about Avatar. This is supposed to be the big one, the one that's gonna save the box office. This movie is supposed to be like an, every other James Cameron movie where. It plays for months and months and months in the theater and makes billions and billions of dollars, even though the movies are pretty mediocre. Let's be honest. Well, Most, they're pretty. They're pretty. Pretty that's and this mediocre. One, this one, that's what I'm hearing. Uh, I'm hearing that it's beautiful, but the story is drags. It's too long of a movie. It, they said it's a rehash of the first one. Uh, that basically it's a last hour, but it's just one giant battle. They said it never ends. Yeah. Uh, so they said the Avatar The Way of Water topped Friday with a sizable 53 million, the director's biggest opening day for a domestic debut. Okay, very specific. The director's biggest opening day for a domestic debut in the 130 to 150 million dollar range. Right, on a Tuesday at three o'clock. Yeah. A box office analyst stressed the modeling has become more difficult in the pandemic. Oh, here we go, era. pandemic again. Uh, it really did whatever we thought it was going to do. It's the pandemic again, everyone. Staunch rivals believe Avatar 2 will have an incredibly have incredibly robust legs, even if the opening weekend comes in at 130 million. Overseas, the movie has grossed 127 million in the first three days for an early global haul of 180 million. Well, that's interesting because they expected that to be 300 million globally. It was a global haul specific like 300 and some million. Yep. So that's significant. If that's the total, that's significantly under. But again, it's too early to tell it. It's it's and this is one. Look, we've done multiple videos on this. And I know we're going to get people in the comments that didn't actually watch those videos where we said repeatedly, I don't know what this movie is going to do because personally, I don't see much of a demand for Avatar. But apparently, it's there. It's there so much that people are willing to kill themselves because they don't live in Pandora, right? Like, I don't get it, but a lot of people don't get the stuff I'm That's, into either. I think so. it's a little scary, actually. I think it's scary. So heading into the weekend, tracking suggested the Way of Water's launch would be 150 million to 175 million domestic and 450 million to 550 million globally. Overseas, the movie is receiving a coveted day and day release in China, although a major, here we go, Major COVID outbreak is having an impact on the box yes, it's office. it's always COVID. It's always, you know. Another challenge. The film's running time is a hefty three hours right. and 12 minutes, resulting in fewer show times. Uh, yeah, but you're paying, but you're, you're sh fewer show times, but you're charging more for tickets. So I think that will balance each other out. At the same time, it faces almost no competition. Uh-uh, strange world. Strange world is going <laughs> to take, its, take yeah. its lunch. The 3D tentpole is seeing huge share of business come from IMAX and other premium large format screens, which is what happened with the first one. Uh -huh. People went to go see it in 3D, meaning that some consumers don't want to pay an upcharge for premium or 3D experience. Uh, either way, the way of water is opening notably ahead of the 77 million domestic debut of the first one in 2009 when the ticket prices weren't as high. I just, How many tickets were sold? That we need to we need to really start looking at when they talk about box office because they, they actually some theaters said they were going to jack up the ticket prices just for this movie. Well, they're like the groundbreaking film went on to become one of the top grossing films. Yes. How many times is it re released? It's been re released so many times. They just re released it again recently over the course of how many years? Well, how many years has it been? Like 
13 years. Yeah. They re-released it umpteen times to make, and every time it would lose its place at first, here it was a re-release. If projections are right, Avatar 2 will open in the same range as Maverick, which debuted to 126 million domestically and went on to amass a staggering 1.49 billion worldwide. That is still, now Maverick did not have China. No. Maverick was significantly cheaper it was yes. a much, much cheaper movie. It didn't have the visuals of Avatar. No. Um, and, you know, there were a lot of other things going on there. I, I don't know. If it does $1.49 billion, that is half of what the first Avatar did. And that's actually going to be considered a failure because this movie was so expensive that multiple sources have reported. Again, not our, our sort of... Multiple mainstream media outlets have reported that Disney needs to clear $2 billion just to break even on this movie. Mm -hmm. So this has to be the biggest thing since the last biggest thing. No, I want to say, though, some of that $2 billion is front-loaded for the other movies coming out, yeah, too. Sure. I think some of the stuff, you know, because they were doing them kind of back-to-back -back or whatever, I'm sure some of the expense, you know, is, is you know, actually shared between the different movies, not yeah. just this one. I want to make that clear. Yeah. Uh, in earlier interviews promoting the sequel, Cameron indicated it would need to gross in the $2 billion range. So they're saying it's tracking where Maverick was. Maverick, of course. <laughs> you laid that up. James yeah. Cameron said it, but you made it up because Clownfish lost. Audience score is pretty high. Uh, lots of people want to go see blue cat people flying and swimming and, you know, uh, entangling their, uh, uh, what are they, their USB cords that grow out of the back of their heads. Okay. When they make out. I you remember. I, 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 did, I didn't like the movie. I didn't barely watched it. I thought it was boring as hell. So they've literally got like organic USB ports and they just kind of plug their wires into each other and then they can feel what the other person's feeling. It's really pretty, pretty creepy. And, and they go there in the first movie. I do remember, yes. Yes, that was... That so was they, but the critic scores dropped down to 78%. Yeah. On the audience score, and you're looking at, a lot of people are like, it's really pretty, it's really pretty, but and there's usually, there's a lot of buts involving both the critic... <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of buts. But the critic score and the audience score, it, it usually is beautiful, breathtaking, uh, stunning visuals, story is the same, you know, it was too long, that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, Jurassic Punk has 100%. What's Jurassic Punk? I have no idea. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's talk about people being depressed. So Yeah, this is kind of, this is actually, we're not making fun. This is actually the very, very concerning to me. I do remember this being a thing when it happened, and I thought it was ridiculous. I'm like, what the hell? Who's going to get that upset? I mean, I don't remember like Star Wars or Star Trek fans. Well, some Star Trek fans. I guess got upset that like the utopia they showed didn't actually exist. But I'm like, then you'd have to deal with the Borg and the Klingons and all that crap. Don't yeah. read books. Don't read books. Yes. Cause you don't want to, you don't want to compare reality uh, to fantasy because fantasy is always more attractive than, mm -hmm. than reality is. Uh, so yeah, more and more people started flocking to theaters to go see Avatar. And then they had a phenomenon known as post Avatar depression. So what you argue that it's irresponsible of Disney to put a Pand world of Pandora and, and to make more Avatar movies if it was actually causing people to want to kill themselves the first time? They need a suicide booth in the corner. I mean, you need to put more. <laughs> no, but, no, but listen, listen, you need to put up warnings on films that have flashing lights because it could knock you into a seizure. Avatar, but they kill know you. that people are wanting to die over Avatar, and then they're making more and they're not putting warnings or anything up. I don't get it. I just, I don't get it. I mean, look, this is kind of the same with anybody that, that, uh, you know, I mean, this it's probably the same mindset of the people that, that go to bat for these corporations. Like, Oh my God, if you hate my movie, you hate my cartoon, you hate my video game, whatever, you know, you're a horrible person. You should die. Cause to them, it's like, it's almost like it's become a religion and you're attacking their religion. You know, but in this case, we're talking about computer generated cat people, you know, not to judge, but I'm I'm judging, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, there are better hills to die on, mm -hmm. even though these hills float. Don't, don't, you're just making it worse. I'm making it worse. These hills float. That's why they want to. So apparently there's a fan community. How do you even say that? Neutral? Neutral? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They have a cool logo, though. I like your logo. I like your logo. Look, I like Pandora. I do. And the he part, does. He loves Pandora. I love Pandora. The weird thing is, I, I didn't like the first Avatar movie. I thought it was boring. But the visuals are good. I like Pandora and Disney World. It's actually one of my favorites. Pandora is actually very awesome. It's Disney very World. cool, especially at night. And it's absolutely beautiful. 
And uh, Flight of Passage is actually one of my favorite rides in Disney World, even though I didn't like the movie. So but they were successful. you don't want to die when you leave. No, I don't. And I'd be very bummed if they shut the ride down, but I wouldn't kill myself. Mm. Uh, Apparently people go to the, but they visited the park and then they went home and then they had to take a semester off from school because they were so distraught. Wow. I'm glad you didn't go behind the scenes because it's, it's kind of distressing. Yeah, on the back side of the, the back side of the dumpsters. And the <laughs> so there's a, a post avatar depression phenomenon, which is part of CNN. And they're talking about the feature. They have Forbes. This is back in 2010 that ways to cope with the depression of the dream of Pandora being intangible. Well, someday we might get there, you know. Um, so they have a Discord. Uh, they learn the language. They learn the game. language, which I, I mean that that's it, not unusual. And I think well, this happens with Star Trek too. And that's what I was thinking. Lord of the Rings and on, anything right. like that. But I think um, Disney was definitely capitalizing on that. Like they they were kind of capitalizing on other people's pain because they were like, oh yeah, we're going to incorporate the language into the park. And originally when it opened, they did a lot more with that, but now they're just kind of like, eh, whatever. Yeah. We were, we were kind of playing along at first. Now we just, we don't care. You know? <laughs> so, I just, I can't wrap my head around it. Um, so are people going to get, are people going to get depressed again? Um, this is a 24 year old digital artist in Texas. Didn't see the film until 2017 and revealed he was surprised how it had taken such a strong hold on him. A lot of people have experienced this in the community. It really made me rethink a few things. I had no idea I could be so deeply influenced by something like this. I had no idea how deeply it was going to change. Well, look, me. I mean, films and, and, and books are different things changing your th way you think about things. It's not unusual. That's not something I think that is something that she mocked or is unusual in any way, shape, or form. It happens to a lot of people. You know what's really depressing is when you fall in love with a piece of media and then you meet the people behind the piece of media and they're complete douchebags. And you're like, wow, that's depressing. Not only is it not real, but the people who made it suck. Suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, but it's disturbing when you take where, where the line gets crossed is when you cannot separate fantasy from reality. Yeah. And we see a lot of this. And now again, not to, not to be an ageist here, but there are a lot of people in their twenties. Here's another one, 25 year old physicist, uh, saw it in a theater and developed post avatar depression years later. And I think, you know, the pandemic might've actually, I think so. Cause it, because like reality was so bleak, you know. There's a, I'm also seeing a pattern here: 24 year old, That's 25 year old. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, people, yeah, people are very skewed on their views of things because of the pandemic, or because of I would argue the internet and the way people are taught to interact with other people at this point in time. So it's kind of hard for us to wrap our heads around it. But to these people, like that kind of thing's all they know, I guess. When you think about it. Yeah. So, yeah, I went to Disney World and it, it took me out of school for a semester. Mm -hmm. So depressed um, by it. I, I, God, I don't even I don't even know what to say. to Like, I don't I don't even know what to say to this. I, I get it. I guess that especially if, if your own life isn't that great, especially when we're going through crap like the pandemic and the, you know, everybody's locked in their houses for two years and all this other stuff like this looks really attractive. But I'm also like, I don't want to be fighting space marines and mechs either. Mm -mm. I mean, it'd be fun to fly around, I guess, on a pterodactyl, but you got to deal with the space marines and they're pretty, pretty badass. It's a little worse than being stuck in your house, I think, for it's, two years. It's, <laughs> just, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I get it. I think, I think that the people are so, I think it's easy. It's people that are younger, especially have grown up in a time that's different than we grew up in a time. And I think they've been taught to be more controllable, if that makes sense. And I think that then they're easily, they're more manipulated, easily manipulated by things like this, which is a scary thing. We were free range as kids. I mean, I think that now, like our childhoods compared to our kids' childhoods. And basically when we were kids, like your parents would just turn you loose outside and you would just go do whatever you would, you know, leave home at, Nine ten o'clock in the morning after Saturday morning cartoons, you'd be gone all day. You'd come home before sundown, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have cell phones. Nobody knew where we were. Uh, we were out. I was outside most of the day on the weekends. Yeah, but you know, like we had that. We didn't have the internet like it is now. Yeah. We didn't have like TikTok and all that stuff. So like we had to communicate with each other, and people I don't think know how to communicate anymore. So you form, you know, escapism relationships with things uh, is I guess more. Uh, real to people than it, you know, it used to be. You used to go to a movie, okay, that was a movie, that was cool. I'm going to go home, play with my toys and make the movie happen in my mind. But you weren't like, I'm going to die if it's not real. You know what I mean? I, I just think, and it seems like it's a certain age range. Yeah, I, I mean, we see this a lot with cartoon stands too. It's the same the same age range. And 
It's it's kind of weird because you know at the end of the day, I mean, as cool as it is, it's still a product. But their identity is so tied into this this product. Yeah, well, it's the same with we've seen it with Star Wars too, you know, and uh, not to this extent though. I mean, Star Wars being a global phenomenon, even I don't think we've seen it. Well, Disney Star Wars fans are different, I think, in a lot of ways. But I mean, we haven't seen it to this extent. Like, if I can't go to outer space like Star Wars. It's not worth it. But I, I'm like, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Are there enough? Are, are there enough of these people that are going to go back time and time and time again to make it make two billion dollars, or are they going to go once get depressed all over again and then never go back? Because <laughs> they're like, I can't actually live there. I don't there. know. It's just, it's just hammer your head around it. But at the end of the day, the movie is tracking behind what they figured. It does not yeah. mean it's not going to do well. You know, it, can, it has a long time. It'll be in the theater forever. Let's be honest. Yeah, and the next big movie, that, again, it's a Disney movie. And Disney doesn't care. I mean, they'll cannibalize their own movies. I mean, we, we've mm -hmm. seen it. Um, but the next big Disney movie is uh, Ant-Man 3, I think. And that is comes it? out in the spring. Know. So, and then this is going to definitely be the, uh, the death knell, I think, for Wakanda. Because... You know, people have a choice. Hey, Wakanda's been out for a month or two. Right. This, this is new and shiny. So anyway, we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.